Hello and welcome to In Depth. I'm Tina Jha. VE Day or Victory in Europe Day celebrates the end of the Second World War, the most devastating conflict that humankind had ever seen. Celebrated across Europe, the day marks the official end of the conflict on 8th of May 1945. Five years later, on the 9th of May, Europe Day became an annual day of celebration. This time, it was for the presentation of the Schumann Declaration in 1950. That paved the way for a community that was a precursor to the European Union. It marked the development of an idea to bring about peace and integration among member countries that had fought a bloody war. The idea involved believed merging the economic interests between France and Germany to reduce the risk of future such conflicts. The treaty bound the six countries who signed the treaty in 1951. In the years to come, the economic merger between member countries was deepened further with the creation of the European Economic Community. Europe Day is marked around the world across European institutions with guided tours, debates and chances to view the workings of the European Union. In depth today traces the development of the road taken by once warring countries to create peace and shared prosperity. It also looks at the challenges that face the European Union today. Europe Day commemorates the unification of Europe, a process that started five years after the end of the Second World War. It commemorates a radical idea in which the victors and the vanquished of the Second World War collaborated to create a zone of peace and shared prosperity. It ensured unprecedented peace and stability in a continent that had witnessed unimaginable destruction due to war. In this report, we take a look at the historical Schumann Declaration that is the inspiration for the celebration of Europe Day. Observed on 9th May in various countries, Europe Day celebrates peace and unity in Europe. It is also known as a VE Day or Victory in Europe Day. The day was first recognized on 8th May 1945 when the German troops throughout Europe finally laid down their arms to mark the end of the Second World War in Europe. The end of World War II, however, saw a war ravaged Europe struggling to recover from the destruction caused by the conflict. Five years after the victory, on 9th May 1950, French Foreign Minister Robert Schuman presented the historical Schuman Declaration that laid down the vision of cooperation between the European countries to ensure peace and prosperity in Europe. Schuman proposed the creation of an institution that would pool and manage coal and steel productions of the continent. The idea was intended to serve two purposes, economic and political. It would merge the economic interests of France and Germany to reduce the risk of future conflict. The treaty was signed in Paris in 1951 and came into force the following year. France, Germany, Italy, Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg signed it to become the six founding countries. The European Coal and Steel Community, or the ECSC, was set up as a supranational community. It meant that the power and influence of member states transcended national boundaries or interest to share in the decision-making concerning the collective body. This is the day on which the integration of Europe started after the Treaty of Rome in 1959. And uh, so it started uh, initially to begin with as uh, six countries and then after that they have uh, kept on expanding. One of the biggest expansions took place in 2004 when uh, more than 10 uh, countries, particularly in East Europe and the Nordic countries, they also became a part of the European Union. So the 9th of uh, May is celebrated uh, as the Day of Europe because it signalled the expanding cooperation and convergence of policies amongst the European countries. Today we have uh, 29 countries uh, of Europe which are a part of the European Union. 
Of course, we are seeing that uh, Brexit is uh, happening, is it, it's in the throes. The Schuman Declaration was the first step towards the birth of the European Union. The six founding nations of the Schuman Declaration further agreed to deepen their economic integration with the establishment of European Economic Community. The agreement came into force with the signing of the Treaty of Rome in 1958. The Single European Act of 1985 set the objective of creating a single common market while the Maastricht Treaty in 1992 saw the birth of the European Union. Basically, the idea was that uh, the countries were fighting with each other. Many of these countries, particularly the big powers, uh, France and Germany, they were fighting with each other. And after the Second World War, it was uh, felt that uh, all these countries uh, should come together. They should uh, stop uh, fighting with each other and there should be platforms that should be created on which they could uh, work together and they could cooperate. So e economics was one in terms of the economic uh, coal and steel community that was formed because both France and Germany have very significant quantities of coal and iron ore. So it was thought that the countries, these two countries to begin with could uh, start collaborating with each other. So we had uh, uh, France, Germany, Italy and uh, Benelux, Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg. These were the six countries which came together and which really formed the core of the European Union as it stands today. It was in 1985 that the European community started commemorating May 9th as Europe Day. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. VE Day or Victory in Europe Day marks the day towards the end of the Second World War when fighting against Nazi Germany in Europe came to an end. On the 8th of May 1945, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill made an announcement on the radio that the war in Europe had finally come to an end following Germany's surrender the day before. On the anniversary of this momentous day in Europe, we take you through the series of events that led to this day and how countries celebrated the day back in 1945. VE Day commemorates the unconditional surrender of the Nazi Germany to the Allied forces in 1945, ending World War II in Europe. With Adolf Hitler killed by his own hand, German military leaders signed surrender documents at several locations in Europe on May 7th. The defeat of Germany and its allies threw them at the mercy of their victorious rivals. The war had raged for over five years and eight months in Europe. It started with Germany's invasion of Poland on September 1, 1939. By the summer of 1941, the military of German dictator Hitler concurred or subdued virtually all of Europe from Spain's eastern border to the western border of the Soviet Union. Italy was under the control of the fascist Benito Mussolini. Allied with Germany, the two nations fought against the British and later the Americans in North Africa and Italy. While still at war with Great Britain, Hitler invaded the USSR on June 22, 1941 and on December 11 of that year, he declared war on the United States of America to honor a mutual support pact he had signed with Imperial Japan. The European war and the war the Japanese had been fighting in Asia and the Southwest Pacific were now a global conflict, the Second World War. Upon the entering in December 1941, the US agreed on a Europe first strategy which was to concentrate on defeating Germany, Italy and their satellites rather than focusing the bulk of men and resources on the war in the Pacific. VE Day therefore marked a major milestone for the Allies but did not end the war, as Allied governments pointedly reminded their citizens. Attention turned to finishing the war against Imperial Japan. On May 7, 1945, in London, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill learned of the German surrender but no official announcement was made until that evening. The understated official announcement from Britain's Ministry of Information said simply, in accordance with arrangements between the three great powers, May 8 will be treated as victory in Europe Day and will be regarded as a holiday. Well, it was, uh, you know, of course, West Germany um, 
was part of the European Union from the very early days. But Germany's history, because of its history and because of its role in the Second World War, was always a, a, a very challenging issue because if you think of the Second World War, uh, Germ uh, Hitler's Germany was such a big part of why that war happened. So when it came to post Second World War phase, it was there was an attempt to uh, see whether Germany and then it had been divided into a East and West Germany, where the one part was uh, controlled by the Soviet then Soviet Union and the and the one part was controlled by the Western power. So how West Germany? Uh, could perhaps become uh, part of the larger Western liberal space, and that meant that that uh, you know engagement between, in particular, France and Western Germany was supposed to be uh, you know enhanced, because France and Germany were the two pivotal powers in Europe, and it was assumed or thought that if these two countries can get along then perhaps the uh, conflict prone region could become more cooperation prone and the evidence now suggests that that has been the case. But f it was first West Germany and after 1990 uh, when Soviet Union collapsed and there was German unification and then the entire Germany has become part of, uh, is now part of European Union. Tens of thousands rushed into the streets of London and continued celebrating till night. Churchill greeted with cries of Vinny Vinny and long live the cause of freedom. A vast crowd assembled in front of Buckingham Palace in London on VE Day and cheered the royal family minutes after the official announcement of Germany's unconditional surrender. In Scotland, the people joined in their national dance, the Eight Some Reel. In Cape Town, thousands of celebrants brought traffic to a near standstill. President Harry S. Truman announced the victory in Europe to the American people and appointed Sunday, May 13th, Mother's Day, appropriately enough a day of prayer for Thanksgiving. He announced to the press the complete victory of the Allies over Germany during a ceremony at the White House in Washington, D.C. Across the country, however, joyous celebrations broke out. Thousands gathered in New York's Times Square. Charles de Gaulle, who led the Free French forces throughout the war, made the official announcement to his people that Germany was defeated and Hitler was dead. This is victory. Today VE Day is known as World War II Victory Day in France. In the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin insisted on maintaining the agreed-upon schedule and made the announcement on May 9th. A little after 1 p.m. on May 9th, it was told in the USSR that Nazi Germany had officially surrendered. As had happened elsewhere, impromptu celebrations broke out. Victory in Europe was welcome news to the Allied troops in the Pacific and the China-Burma-India theatres of war. They greeted it with thanksgiving, but there was little celebration. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And time for a short break on the program. On the other side, we'll talk about the challenges that face the European Union today. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching In Depth. Europe Day, held on the 9th of May every year, marks the anniversary of the historical Schuman Declaration which is considered the beginning of what is now the European Union. In our next report, we bring you details on how the Union evolved, its journey over the years and the challenges, uh, challenges that it faces today. The Schumann Declaration in 1950 proposed that the idea that its founding members, France, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg will pool their coal and steel resources and create a common market by lifting import and export duties. The treaty was signed in Paris in 1951 and came into force the following year. The original six deepened their economic integration with the establishment of the European Economic Community with the signing of the Treaty of Rome in 1958. The Single European Act of 1985 set the objective of creating a single common market. While the Maastricht Treaty in 1992 saw the birth of European Union, 
then featuring 12 countries and set the path of economic and monetary union. Well, it was largely about uh, what uh, Robert Schuman thought was at that point in time, uh, as, as I was discussing, how can we achieve a cooperative framework within Europe? And that uh, was, you know, that emerged into something which became European coal and steel community. So this was basically an idea of functional cooperation. That was basically an idea about how uh, you can generate more, uh, you know, uh, co cooperation in cert on certain issue areas so that you can move away from conflict towards cooperation. Since then, the European Union has undergone expansion through many treaties. The European Union is a political and economic union of 28 member states that are located primarily in Europe. It has developed as an internal single market through a standardized system of laws that apply in all member states in those matters and only those matters where members have agreed to act as one. EU policies aim to ensure the free movement of people, goods, services and capital within the internal market, enact legislation in justice and home affairs and maintain common policies on trade, agriculture, fisheries and regional development. For travel within the Shenzhen area, a region of 26 countries where citizens are allowed free movement, passport controls were abolished. A monetary union was established in 1999 and came into full force in 2002 and is composed of 19 EU member states that use the euro currency. In 2012, the EU received the Nobel Peace Prize for contributions to peace and reconciliation, democracy and human rights in Europe. In 2013, Croatia became the 28th EU member. They have been very, very keen. They have been one of the strongest pillars of uh, uh, the European Union and it has uh, the largest economy, it is the biggest economy as far as European Union is concerned. So taking it forward and uh, since we have seen that it is the economics and the uh, first the free trade area and the customs union uh, that uh, has really proved to be the pivot to bring all these countries together. So Germany has had a very important role to play and now of course even in the area of uh, uh, political integration in the area of uh, foreign policy, security policy, defense policy, there also Germany continues to play a very important role. Since the beginning of 2010, the cohesion of European Union has been tested by several issues, including a debt crisis in some of the Eurozone countries, increasing migration from the Middle East and the United Kingdom's withdrawal from the EU. The UK joined the EU then known as European Economic Community in 1973. A public vote called a referendum was held on Thursday, 23rd June 2016 when voters were asked just one question, whether the UK should leave or remain in the European Union. The leave side won by nearly 52% to 48%, but the exit didn't happen straight away. It was due to take place on 29th March 2019, but the departure date was extended twice, having granted an initial extension of the Article 50 process until 12th April 2019. EU leaders have now backed a six-month extension until 31st October 2019. However, the UK will leave before this date if the withdrawal agreement is ratified by the UK and the EU before then. A length of time, called the transition period, has been agreed to allow the UK and EU to agree a trade deal and to give businesses the time to adjust. People who oppose the deal believe that there are a broad range of complaints, many of which claims the deal fails to give back the UK control of its own affairs from the EU. One of the biggest sticking points has been over what happens at the Irish border. The focus of 2019 Europe Day celebrations is on the theme of choosing your own future, encouraging citizens across the EU to take part in the European elections between 23rd and 26th May. The European institutions are holding open days with public debates, guided tours of official buildings in Luxembourg on 9th May and in Strasbourg on 19th May, while in EU 
Open day took place in Brussels on 4th of May. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. It's been more than 70 years since the publication of the Schuman Declaration, but its spirit is relevant even today. Although Europe has witnessed both political and economic development and in fact even socio-economic changes over these years. In our next report, let's look at the history of the European Union. The European coal and steel community in Europe was intended to prevent any possibility of war among European nations. It had six founding members who deepened their economic integration with the establishment of the European Economic Community with the Treaty of Rome in 1958. Today, the EU has 28 member countries. Well, you know, this um, uh, European project has been a project of various treaties, has evolved as part of various treaties. So you had the first most important treaty was Treaty of Rome, 1957. Then in the second most important treaty, second important treaty was the Treaty of um, the Max Maastricht Treaty in 1992. And that, that showed how, uh, how the European countries were ready to evolve. So, uh, Treaty of Rome, for example, was largely about how the European Union would function. Maastricht Treaty was about how where the policies would go. So, for example, Euro was brought in with the Maast Maastricht Treaty. And Treaty of Lisbon actually brings uh, these two treaties together and forms one single treaty, which basically gives the European project more coherence. In 1986, a single European Act was signed. It provided the basis for a six-year program that aimed at sorting out the problems with the free flow of trade across EU borders, leading to the creation of a single market. In 1993, the single market was completed with four freedoms, including the free movement of goods, services, people and money. The decade of 1990 was broadly divided into two treaties, the Maastricht Treaty in 1993 and the Treaty of Amsterdam in 1999. The Maastricht Treaty established the pillar structure of the European Union that stayed in place till the Lisbon Treaty came into force in 2009. The treaty also expanded the competence of the EU and led to the creation of the single European currency, the Euro. Then came the Treaty of Amsterdam that was signed on 2nd October 1997 and enforced on 1st May 1999. Under the treaty, Member states agreed to transfer certain powers from national governments to the European Parliament across diverse areas including immigration, adopting civil and criminal laws and enacting foreign and security policy. It also implemented institutional changes for expansion as new member nations joined the EU. The Treaty of Lisbon was because uh, there were problems that were found in terms of expansion both in terms of deepening as well as expansion of the European Union. So Treaty of Lisbon was uh, uh, an attempt to deal with these problems, to deal with these differences and in 2000 uh, the countries came together, formed the Treaty of Lisbon and uh, this was, uh, this suggested a way forward as to how the differences could be, uh, could be bridged and the countries could cooperate and collaborate and move forward and, uh, and we have seen as I mentioned 2004 there was a big expansion of the, uh, of the European Union in which a large number of countries from East Europe, Nordic countries were also became members of uh, European Union and that has helped to expand the horizontally the reach of the European Union. The history of the European Union between 1993 and 2004 is the period between its creation and enlargement. In the first decade of 2000, more countries adopted the Euro. On 29th October 2004, the European Constitution was signed by EU leaders in Rome. The treaty was put to ratification in each member state and after receiving constitutional rejection by many, paved the way for the Lisbon Treaty. The Treaty of Lisbon came into force in 2009. It provided the EU with modern institutions and more efficient working methods. The global economic crisis struck hard in Europe in 2008. The EU helped several countries to confront their difficulties and established the banking union to ensure safer and more reliable banks. Till October 2018, 
the geographical scope of the banking union was identical to that of the euro area in future other non euro member states of the eu could join the banking union under a procedure known as close cooperation bulgaria is expected to join in the course in 2019 as part of its long term aim to adopt euro as its currency there are specific challenges that the eu continue to face even today humanitarian economic and sovereign that also finds an echo in the words of schuman declaration which says and i quote world peace can't be safeguarded without the making of creative efforts proportionate to the dangers which threaten it unquote with inputs from vipul agrawal bureau report rajya sabha tv So that's it from us in today's edition of In Depth. We'll be back same time tomorrow with a focus on some other subject. You can also watch our program online on YouTube and Twitter. And don't forget to send your feedback as well as suggestions about our program. Thank you very much for your time.